Thank you for joining us for today's seminar on cultivating resiliency. In today's seminar, we will learn to develop healthier self-care habits, motivate ourselves after failure, shift unhelpful mindsets, and at the end, we will learn a relaxation exercise in mindful breathing. So to get started today, let's talk about the concept of self-care. In terms of self-care, it can be broken down into physical and psychological needs. In terms of our physical needs, when we talk about nutrition, it's very important to eat small, frequent meals at regular intervals. And it can also be helpful in the morning to think ahead by doing things like packing healthy snacks, which can either be done in the morning or even the evening before. It's also important to be active on a regular basis. A lot of times when we talk about exercise, people think about going to the gym. While going to the gym, especially with a gym buddy, can be really important, exercise doesn't have to mean just going to the gym. Any sort of physical activity, whether that be walking by yourself, walking with someone else, or doing the stairs, or even small things like deciding to take the stairs instead of the elevator can be really important. When we talk about physical needs, sleep is one of the most important and also one of the most neglected factors for success. We know that sleep impacts mood, energy levels, and concentration. So let's talk more about sleep. When we talk about sleep, we usually refer to sleep hygiene. A lot of times students have difficulties with falling asleep or staying asleep, sleeping too much, or not sleeping enough. Sometimes, if we look to sleep hygiene, we can understand that by simply correcting some of the habits that we've become accustomed to, it can drastically improve our restorative sleep. For example, it's important to not nap during the day. However, if it's absolutely imperative to nap, try to keep it up to and under 45 minutes and preferably before 3 or 4 p.m. Also, within four to six hours of bedtime, do not consume alcohol, caffeine, heavy, spicy, or sugary foods. In terms of alcohol, although it has an immediate sleep-inducing effect, as the levels in your blood start to fall, there is a stimulant or wake-up effect. So you may think you slept better when you drink alcohol. In fact, chances are you will wake up feeling very tired because your sleep has not been properly restored. When it comes to the do's of sleep hygiene, do your best to have a consistent going to bedtime and awakening time. Your body gets used to falling asleep at a certain time if it is kept fairly consistent. Now, I know that you are in university and the concept of going to bed and waking up at the same time each day, you might be thinking to yourself, geez, how is this even possible? Well, if you are unable to go to bed at the same time each night, Try and do what's called anchoring your sleep in the morning, which means waking up at the same time each morning, regardless of when you go to bed. I know this can be tough, but it is essential to maintain as much consistency as possible. Also, regular exercise, particularly in the afternoon, can help deepen sleep at night. In contrast, strenuous exercise within two hours before bedtime can actually decrease someone's ability to fall asleep. We also know that technology can interfere with sleep onset. Stop using technology 30 minutes before bed. We know that light blocks the chemical melatonin, which helps you fall asleep. So turning off things like your TV, your computer screen, or if you feel like you must use your cell phone, there are apps that you can download that mimic the natural sunlight. So as the day becomes shorter and shorter, the actual light on your screen mimics the light outside. Also, reserving the bed for only sleep and sex is very important. Don't use your bed as an office or couch. This is to let your body know that the bed is for sleeping and sleeping only. Finally, creating a comfortable sleep environment is always important for trying to get the best optimal sleep. This can be anything from choosing the right pillows, 
mattress and bedding that are most comfortable for you, and also finding a comfortable temperature for sleeping and keeping the room well ventilated. A cool, not cold or hot, bedroom is often the most conducive to sleep. Also, blocking out all distracting noise. This could mean using a white noise machine to sleep, or leaving a fan on, and also eliminating as much light as possible. This may be difficult for those who live right in the city. However, we know that some of us need or do better when the room is completely pitch dark. Let's move on to psychological needs in terms of self-care. When we talk about psychological needs with self-care, we're really talking about the balance between the mind, body, and spirit, because this is fundamental to health and well-being. Not just for students, but for all human beings, problems are maintained when this system is out of balance or out of equilibrium. For students, school is important, but we know that it is not healthy to spend all of your time studying. Some students feel like they are wasting their time or not being productive by doing activities other than school. Certainly, we cannot be spending all of our time doing non-school-related activities if we want to be productive academically, but we know that it is the quality of work, not the quantity of time spent doing the work, that is going to help students be most productive. So engaging in activities in addition to school will help restore concentration, attention, mood, and focus, all essential ingredients to increasing work productivity. Activities can be pleasurable, such as socializing with friends, reading, going to the movies, or exercising. Please know that the Student Success Office, located in South Campus Hall, can help if you're having difficulty balancing work and play. Let's now move on to the concept of resilience. Talking about failure and resiliency is important because learning how to fail well teaches us how to get back up and try again. It teaches you how to be resilient. It is in learning resiliency that we learn how to be successful. But what is resilience? Resiliency can be defined as the ability to withstand or recover quickly from difficult situations. Resilient people are able to recover quickly because they utilize their skills and strengths to cope and recover from problems and challenges. Those who do not have resiliency skills yet may instead become overwhelmed by such experiences. They may dwell on problems and use unhealthy coping mechanisms to deal with such challenges. Generally, these individuals are slower to recover from setbacks and may experience more distress as a result. Resilience does not eliminate stress or erase life's difficulties. Instead, it gives people the strength to tackle problems head-on, overcome adversity, and move on with their lives. Some of you may have experienced some sort of failure or setback, whether it is academics, for example, maybe your physics midterm didn't go so well, or maybe it is something personal. For example, having difficulty finding a co-op job, a relationship is ending, or feeling homesick. Some of you haven't experienced failure yet, but we all do at some point. We all have different definitions of what it means to fail or make a mistake. It is important to know that if, but more likely when, it happens, we can prepare for it. Others of you may be sitting here and thinking, I have failed in my past and have learned how to get up again. I consider myself to be a resilient person. That is wonderful. Consider this then as a refresher. Failure. Most of us hate failure and spend quite a bit of our lives trying to arrange things so that this does not happen. We do everything in our power to avoid it. Most of us fear failure almost more than anything else. We do not like to talk about failure. These are deep instincts wired into our very nature. It is so natural to do everything in our power to prevent failure, to prevent disappointment. I would like to suggest to you today that failure is a natural part of being human. Sit with that for a moment. Failure is a natural part of being human. When we prepare for failure and assume it is simply a natural part of growth and learning, we can use it to our advantage. We no longer need to cringe when we hear this four-letter word. And you know what? I have proof of this. 
Steve Jobs helped start Apple and was part of the company's success in the early 1980s. By 1984, however, sales were suffering and others at Apple were unhappy with Jobs' management style, calling him erratic and temperamental. Apple's board of directors phased him out of the company and Jobs resigned from Apple. Of course, we know that he came back to Apple in the 1990s and was a key part in helping the company develop products such as the iMac and iPhone. In a 2005 speech at Stanford University, Jobs admitted that being fired from Apple was extremely difficult at that time, but ultimately helped him focus on priorities and become even more creative. Oprah was fired from her first television reporting job and was told she was not suitable for television. Launch of her network, OWN, was not immediately successful, and some people thought it was a disappointment. Many people thought it would be an automatic hit, but ratings actually decreased in the first year. Oprah said that she suffered symptoms of a nervous breakdown because of the pressure she felt to make OWN successful. This forced her to reconsider how OWN was run and the programming they were producing. It took about three years to see ratings and revenue grow. Jay-Z, who was turned down by several major labels when he started out. Ultimately, the only way he could get his music out was to start his own label, Rockefeller Records, with friends. Now, he has an estimated net worth of $500 million, and Time Magazine 2013 ranked him as one of the most influential people in the world. We need to acknowledge that we did fail and that we feel bad about it. However, getting stuck in a cycle of blame and shame, also known as beating ourselves up, is not productive. It is a very dangerous and self-destructive path to take. It is very hard to be resilient and bounce back when we are punishing ourselves for our mistakes. Please hear that it is important to ask ourselves what we could have done differently to help us continue toward the path of success. However, let's not let that constructive process be interrupted by self-judgment and self-criticism. Let's be compassionate towards ourselves. I want you to think about a failure you recently experienced. So I'm going to pause for a few seconds while you think about that. Hopefully you've thought of one. If you haven't though, that's okay, but play along with this exercise. So I asked you to think about a failure you recently experienced. Now, I want you to imagine a friend told you about this happening to him or her. What would you say? Imagine it's a year from now. If you looked back on this failure, how might you react differently? Why should you keep on moving forward? How does continuing relate to your bigger picture? Is this something you really want? Failing well is being okay with not having the answer yet. The key word in this sentence is yet. Thomas Edison, the creator of the light bulb, is known for saying, If I find 10,000 ways something won't work, I haven't failed. I am not discouraged because every wrong attempt discarded is another step forward. Thomas Edison's teachers told him he was, quote, too stupid to learn anything. Edison went on to hold more than 1,000 patents and invented some world-changing devices like the phonograph, practical electrical lamp, and a movie camera. It is okay and common to question your ability right now. We know, however, that intelligence isn't static. Stanford University psychologist Carol Dweck in decades of research on achievement and success, has concluded that there are two types of people, those with a fixed mindset and those with a growth mindset. Let's explore both. In a fixed mindset, people believe their basic qualities, like their intelligence or talent, are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. They also believe that talent alone creates success, without effort. In a growth mindset, in contrast, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Things are not static. Our brains and talent are just the starting point. 
please spend some time after this discussion is over to review the fixed and growth mindset slides for more detailed information on the different types of mindsets with respect to acceptance of criticism, views on effort, facing obstacles, general beliefs, and handling challenges. Perfectionism is an example of how a fixed mindset can interfere with success. Perfectionism is a set of self-defeating thoughts and behavior patterns focused on unrealistic, unattainable goals. By trying to live up to unrealistic expectations or reach unattainable goals, we can actually reduce our ability to be productive. One way to overcome this obstacle is to shift from striving for perfection, which is a fixed mindset and value based on accomplishment, to striving for excellence, which is a growth mindset and a value based on personal character. When we strive for excellence, we use our mistakes to learn and grow. We correct mistakes and focus on the present. We are happy with giving our best effort to a particular task. We welcome criticism and we benefit from it. We have realistic goals. We can still finish last at something and maintain our self-esteem and self-worth. We're focused on the journey instead of the results. We're motivated to accomplish tasks. And we have feelings of contentment in our present growth. In contrast to feelings of never being good enough which would be part of a perfectionistic mindset. You might be asking yourself, this might be easier said than done. Are there ways that I can try and shift the way I'm thinking about myself, about others, or about the world to be more in line with a growth mindset? One way we can do this is to first learn to understand and be aware when we have a fixed mindset voice. Secondly, we can recognize that we have a choice. We don't need to stick with our fixed mindset. We can talk back to our fixed mindset with a growth mindset voice. We can challenge our automatic thoughts with a growth mindset action change our behaviors, and overcome obstacles. And by doing so, we can take the growth mindset action. J.K. Rowling, author of the Harry Potter novels, said, It is impossible to live without failing at something unless you live so cautiously that you might as well not have lived at all, in which case you have failed by default. Remember, when disappointments come, they are just part of the process. Use them to reach great levels of success. Who knows, maybe your name will be added to the list of great successes Waterloo brags about in years to come. Before we finish today, we are going to do a relaxation exercise. This relaxation exercise is called a five minute mindful breathing. Good breathing habits will enhance your psychological and physical well-being. As you learn to be more aware of your breathing and practice slowing and normalizing your breaths, your mind will quiet and your body will relax. Improper breathing contributes to anxiety, panic attacks, depression, muscle tension, headaches, and fatigue. 
Breathing exercises can be learned in a matter of minutes, and some benefits are experienced immediately. However, the full effects of the exercises may not be fully appreciated until after weeks of dedicated practice. Practice breathing exercises twice per day over the next few weeks. After this exercise, if you feel as though it would be important to try to incorporate this into your daily routine, perhaps try picking a time before you go to bed or when you wake up in the morning. These are natural times where it may be easier to remember to practice these exercises. In this relaxation exercise of five-minute mindful breathing, it can be helpful to listen to someone, such as myself, guide you through these steps. Please also know that many of these exercises are available online or in smartphone apps, or you can record your own. And as I said before, practicing these daily for two to three weeks until it starts to become more of a habit or more routine will help yield best results. Please take a few moments to be still. This may require you to shift your position in your seat, close your eyes, or simply stay in the position you are now. Bring your awareness to your breath wherever you feel it most prominently in your body. It may be at the nose, neck, chest, belly, or somewhere else. As you breathe in normally and naturally, be aware of breathing in. And as you breathe out, be aware of breathing out. There is no need to visualize, account, or figure out the breath. Just be mindful of breathing in and out. Without judgment, just watch the breath ebb and flow like the waves of the sea. There's no place to go and nothing else to do. Just be in the here and now, noticing the breath. Just living life at one inhalation and one exhalation at a time. As you breathe in and out, be mindful of the breath rising when you inhale and falling when you exhale just riding the waves of your own breath, moment by moment, breathing in and breathing out. You may have noticed that from time to time, your attention may wander from the breath. This is natural. When you notice this, simply acknowledge where you went without judgment, and then gently bring your attention back to the breath. Breathing normally and naturally, without manipulating your breath in any way. You're just being aware of the breath as it comes and goes. As you come to the end of this exercise, congratulate yourself for taking this time to be present and mindful. You may notice that you may feel a little bit more tired or sleepy after this exercise, and that is normal. Please give yourself the time you need to recuperate from this exercise, bringing yourself back into the present moment. Thank you for your participation in today's discussion on cultivating resiliency. We would really appreciate if you took a few minutes to complete the evaluation form we really want your input and encourage you to take a few moments to write some thoughts 